Hi, my name is Tom Atkinson, and we're going to talk about the Great Ball Contraption. So here we are. We're going to try to do this one a little quicker because I know the last couple of videos we've done have gone on for like an hour. So uh, right out of the ball dozer, we go into my uh, black module that holds a lot but lets them out one at a time. Uh, we go into a slow conveyor. Uh, from there, we go into my tipping module. And these are all modules we've seen before. And then we got a new module. Uh, this one is by Brian Bonahoom. It's a, a spinning disc type, but uh, brick built, which is a little different. Uh, this is still kind of in an experimental stage. Uh, seems to be working okay, leaking a little, as you can tell. Uh, after that, we go into a, a high-speed conveyor, and I know I've talked about this one before. This was built by a guy who came to a show in like two hours. So, uh, out of that, we go into um, uh, just a simple three-step module that moves the balls along. Um, and from there, we go into my shooter. It's interesting to see the black, the kind of the wear and tear on the pieces there. Yeah, you can see that it, the balls rolling in certain areas will leave patterns. And you can see that throughout the whole thing. There are places wherever you see white brick or whatever, you can see the black streaks. You can probably even see it down the front of my here and in, in between the, the pins, you can probably see black crud. That's really just the paint coming off the balls. No. For years I was convinced it was dirt and dust, but no, it's the paint. <laughs> Definitely the paint. So after the shooter, um, which has been working pretty well today, I must say, uh, um, we go into uh, one of Brian's conveyor module, which he's been improving slowly over time, and this thing has worked rock solid today. So uh, that's what this is all about is observe, improve, um, from there, we go into uh, the Brickworld stackable module. Um, this is, again, Bryant's. He's got a little stack of five of them uh, that pass the balls to each other in a, in, a, in a circle and then move them on into the next module. From there, we go into uh, another slow stepper. And this module uh, is pretty old. I know it's been updated a little bit, but I think the original is pretty old. Uh, from there, we go into Br Brian's brick-built conveyor, and we're getting some jams here, but, you know, that happens. <clears throat> and uh, after we go flipping over the conveyor and down the little squiggles, we go on into my up-and-down module, which is not going up and down really well right now. All right, now it's working. There you go. <clears throat> that's, the, that's the goal, is for it to work. <laughs> and, if, and if I stand here, it'll work. If I look away, it'll stop. So we'll run away. How's that? <laughs> From there, we go into a very simple uh, 10 by 10 module. Like, again, this is uh, an example of the smallest module you can have, because this that's the input bin and its output mechanism all in one. From there, we go into uh, this black module, which is, uh, again, a simple stepper, but just a simple step, um, a little bit longer, so we can hold a little more balls. And there we go to... Um, the square uh, geared module, which has been around a while. Um, it's starting to wear a little bit, so it, it spills more balls. I thought it would wear in and spill less, but no, it's wearing in and spilling more. Uh, out, out of that, we go into uh, this tan three-step module, which is very similar to the black one we saw half a dozen modules ago. Uh, and out of that, we go into, this is um, John Bro's modification of the um, Lego Technic set. This is the alternate build for the uh, excavating, the, the bucket excavator. Okay. Uh, he had to do some modifications to make it a GBC module. Um, but still, it's basically that set. Lego has yet to release an actual GBC module. No, but we have now evidence that they know about us and they support us, and especially the Technic group. Uh, there's been a couple of things they, that they did. They uh, asked a couple of us GBC builders to make videos, and they've edited them down and produced them on their website, which is kind of cool. Uh, so they recognize that <laughs> GBC is a thing. We're getting closer. One day, maybe. <laughs> okay, so from there, we go out of that into... Some more John Bros modules. Uh, this is this module has been around for a while, and it uses NXT motors to flip the uh, the buckets up to the next one. And one of the things I wanted to make sure you guys got a shot of. This is what John does to parts with his module. 
that part was right there. And uh, it, it totally mutilated. <laughs> <laughs> Perils of the GBC. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of the parts we are not nice to, I have to admit. So after these things, flip it on up and it goes out the chute into the next module by John, which is uh, a pair of flippers that are uh, counterbalanced by some tires to make the load a little more even. Uh, and this thing is, as far as I know, has worked flawlessly. Um, from there we go into John's um, module that fits in a box. Uh, and I, <laughs> he's had an issue where the motor on this thing keeps dying. I'm not really sure why, but he's like killed, killed some motors. And no, this isn't the one he killed today. Uh, um, he, not, why does this thing keep killing motors? Nobody knows, but we'll get to the bottom of that. So from there we go into um, this spiral that's on the inside. Um, and we've seen this before, but it, it's an awesome thing to see down inside of there. Uh, and that's, that's the whole thing is that um, there are a number of Archimedes screw types, but this is the only one I've known that's where it's an internal Archimedes screw. Kind Look at that cool tunnel vision going in there. Yeah. Um, from there we go into his big tall conveyor that gets us over our entrance. So us old guys don't have to crawl under tables, which is um, a big plus. Uh, once the ball goes across and drops down this long, spinny, spirally thing to use up all that energy uh, and not have the balls go flying out of control, um, rolls into another of the 10 by 10 simple modules. From there, we go to um, another one of John's modules. It's a, a dual stepper. Uh, and this module is, I really like this because it's kind of a, a, most of the steppers have an imbalance to them, but this is a balanced thing. So you're doing one and the other one, mm -hmm. you know, it makes the motor last longer. <laughs> From there we go into um, a Archimedes screw. This is Mr. Red's adaption of um, one of my designs that, is, as far as I know, this has been working pretty well. He has a couple of different versions of this, and uh, I know... This version's been working fine. I think the other version is not on the table right now just because he's had some issues with it. Um, so once we go to that, we go into a simple long conveyor that has uh, a, a zigzag output. Uh, and again, this is um, Mr. Red's adaption of a Mako Arts module. And of course he gives Mako the credit there. You got that Mako, see that? <laughs> okay, excellent. So. <laughs> From the output of that, uh, this is where we do our table drop. <clears throat> and we drop down into we have this adapter that'll fit on top of a input bin to make sure the ball doesn't go crazy. It drops down and then goes into this conveyor, which goes up to uh, drop down the, this Plinko thing. And some t occasionally, the ball will get a basket, which is kind of neat. Uh, from there, we go into um, a brick world module from this year workshop module and then uh, Mr. Red's adaption of one from several years ago all strung in a row and from there we go into a module that was built by this young man <laughs> would you like to say hi hello five year old very impressive. <laughs> so this young man went to um, uh, Michigan, which I was not at, but him and Mr. Red um, got along fine, and uh, they ended up going home with one of the workshop modules, and apparently he built it all by himself. Wow. And, and when he showed up with it, we put it in the loop, and it's been working fine. And he's come in to help, and clearly he's helping. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> you can always use more help here. So. Especially that size. <laughs> He's the perfect size the, for that level. <laughs> for this and the getting the balls off the floor, and it's awesome. So from there, we go into a couple of uh, Mr. Red's uh, modified first-year Brick World Workshop modules. Um, the output of that goes into Mr. Red's uh, ascender, as he calls it, uh, which gets the balls back up to normal table height. The output of that goes into um, a conveyor which feeds his tsunami, which is um, basically the, the belt is stationary with something moving underneath it, 
causing a wave down it. Uh, and this is, this is a really neat mechanism. It, it took them a number of iterations to get the thing to work. And as far as I know, this thing has worked flawlessly since he finally got it to this good state. And it's been that way for a number of events. After that, we go into Mr. Red's binary counter, which is um, has a huge conveyor uh, bringing it up to the top because it's a series of binary switches. Uh, and you can see in the front, you get uh, a count. And there's a, a count of everything in d digitally, or binary, uh, of every ball that's gone through. And then as they go through, they flip the switches and then drop to a conveyor that takes them out. So this thing has um, had some issues with jamming in the top. Um, I, I think he's now got a good handle on that and, and seems to be working better and better uh, every time I see it. it. It's working a little more. So from there, we move into um, a simple ball pump, uh, which is a fairly reliable design. Out of that, we move into a conveyor, which has been heavily decorated. And of course, you know, I have this weakness for themed decorated modules, and I, this certainly qualifies. So it's pretty cool. Um, after that, we go into another module, and this, all these modules are by James, and, and he's over there repairing one quickly before we get to it. Uh, so from, we got a, a flipper module, which just has um, some bent uh, beams flipping the balls up, and then they roll it down a ramp and go into the next module that's a conveyor. The next conveyor is interesting because he's using the bumpiness of the conveyor to act as an agitator too. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's kind of cool how it, and when it was quieter in here, I heard that thump, 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 and it, and it was like, what the heck is that? So um, it, it, it's because of the spacing of the pins on there, it's kind of an irregular beat, and the, but there's a good concept. <laughs> anyway, so from there we go into another conveyor. And this one's whipping right along, so we go into the, flip it into the next one, which is another bent lift arm type of module. Uh, and this this one's been working great as far as I know. And this is actually part of this one because this is what's allowing the balls to feed by this. Okay. This is the thing that's doing the work. This is the decoration. <laughs> and this is a very busy thing. Um, I like the use of the old Samsonite gears. Mm -hmm. uh, those are rock solid gears. I love them. Uh, and the minifigs doing various jobs. And clearly, somebody's laying down on the job in there. Got to get back to work. Yeah, we'll we'll mention that to James when we get to it. Um, so from there, we go into this module that basically shakes the balls as they slowly roll down. Um, I'm not sure. They probably could just roll straight through, but having the post in there and the shaking going on uh, makes it interesting. It's more fun that way. Yeah, and I don't know what we're going to do now since... <laughs> We've hit, a, we've hit a wall of people and um, a broken module. Broken module. <laughs> broken module. It happens. As a matter of fact, it happens a lot. So, you know, you guys statistically have, have done very well at not catching uh, broken modules in action. Um, and, and I don't know whether that's a... Oh, this is a special honor, people. Oh. We have what we call a Hassan plug module that Steve is actually the module. And what's cool is we don't even have to plug him in. It's the first 100% human module in GBC history. Right. And you know what? I bet you it works pretty well, too. I think he could do this all day, no problem. I bet you he can't. <laughs> oh, now he's acting more like a module. There we go. A little bit of leak. Wait, I want to see a jam. <laughs> I'm waiting for a jam. Waiting for a jam. It will happen. It's just a matter of when. It's going to build up and then fling them or something. I don't know. Something's going to happen. I they know. never work like you think they will. That is true. That is definitely true. Or, or worse is you've got it all working just the way you want it to. <laughs> and you bring it here and it doesn't work the way it did at home. <laughs> All right, let's move on around this module. As thrilling as that one is. <laughs> um, from there, we move into uh, an alternately colored workshop module. 
and into a, um, a, a module that's got parts in there that it shouldn't have. <laughs> it's like a loose antenna? <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll skip on. And we have a couple more workshop modules from this year. And then we have uh, another one of these pump builds. And then we have a, um, a Minesweeper themed module, which has a ball pump feeding it. Is a ball pump feeding a ball pump? No, it's a ball pump. Okay, it's a ball pump. And then the balls roll out and go on to um, the bee themed module. Very bright. Very colorful. It's hard to miss. It's like a warning. Stay away from this. Yellow and black. Um, because it might sting. I don't know. So from there, we go into a couple of the workshop modules uh, from the first year. Out of that, we go into uh, Brad's roller coaster, which is uh, the balls have two paths. They go up a big conveyor. They have two, two paths. One is one that winds around. And the other has a loop-de-loop -loop at the bottom. Uh, this is always fun. It, it takes a little tweak and occasionally drops a ball like that. Um, it does take some tweaking to get it right. and uh, But it's been working pretty well this week, this week, this day, whatever it is. <laughs> it all blends together. It is a blur after a while. Um, the output of that, we go into uh, a workshop module from a couple years ago, into another ball pump and then into a couple more of this year's uh, workshop module in different colors, uh, and then into another workshop module from the first year, and then we go into uh, Brad Sweet's um, Alpine Slide, or I don't know what you call it. It's a it's basically conveyor. A, it's a ski lift. There you go. So, and this is one that he's made incremental improvements over the years. Um, I think the latest change was to increase the number of chairs in the ski lift um, which keeps a jam from happening back there so uh, this has been working pretty well this weekend so I know I know he pulled it from a show uh, last couple shows because he was getting frustrated with it uh, now he's got those bugs worked out and decided to move on so it's working and we go on to the next module which I you may recognize as kind of a minion-y kind of thing um, which has uh, a ball pump that feeds the ball up through the minion and out his face somehow. I don't know. And then that goes out of there and into uh, his interpretation of Akiyuki's Cup to Cup. Uh, this is definitely uh, an audience favorite uh, type of thing just because of the, the motion of the ball being handed from cup to cup, gear to gear and up, up the path and dropped into its little output ramp and on to the next module. Um, the next module being a very American... <laughs> patriotic. Patriotic workshop module from this year. Um, and that is definitely... I didn't realize how red, white, and blue that really was. That's awesome. <clears throat> and from there we go to uh, my bridge contraption, which is way more complicated than what it's being actually used for. Um, it's designed to have trains go over it, but a train hasn't crossed this bridge in five years anyway. It's in a sad state of affairs. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to get retired soon. Uh, so out of that, we go into... Now we're in a whole string of my modules, which we can just zip through. We've been seeing these before. Pneumatic module, uh, which oh, is still... Always a fun one to watch that going. It is. Um, and your camera probably can't keep up with it. Uh, this module takes some maintenance because because of the high speed, it wears parts out pretty quickly. But only in the compressor and the motor. You know, that super overpriced <laughs> buggy motor that you can't get anymore. Uh, yeah, I need to uh, get that updated and use a power function. Um, this module actually is now, uh, Lego Technic has made this module famous because this is the one that oh, of mine that they ended okay. up putting the on. official Lego Technic. <laughs> yeah, so... So they recognize that, hey, we're real and we do stuff that's cool. Um, from there, we move into um, this module, which is just basically a, a small sweeper, and it sweeps the balls up three studs at a time. And um, there we go. Rolls out the output onto my uh, lifting platform one, which has a platform going up and down with ramp in and out. And uh, they roll onto the platform. The ramp lifts. They roll out into my mesmerizing... Archimedes screw, 
uh, which we've seen before, and um, still keeps plugging. And it's got a new, less whiny motor in it. It's always a good thing. New and improved. New and improved. And now we go into this thing, which is starting to misbehave. One ball at a time, guys. Um, and I can see, you know, the last time I looked at this, which was probably 45 minutes ago, they were all in sync. And now they're a little bit out, you know. Um, I can fix that, maybe. But let's move on. So out of this, we go down the zigzaggy output to use up some of the energy um, and into my perpetual motion module, which has a conveyor bringing up and a, and a water wheel that some of them recirculate. And when they go out, they go out this little chute on the side and fire down into the next module, which apparently um, is being carefully photographed. Um, that's a dangerous place. I mean, if he falls in there, he's going to get hurt. That's going to be the end of him. Yeah. Um, that little ball pump then feeds into uh, my pusher module. It's been around for a while. Um, I just Interesting, I just replaced this big turntable. It was so worn that the two pieces, if you picked it up and turned it over, it would fall apart. It was that worn. I know some of these modules really abuse and wear Lego parts, but that's got to be the first time I've ever seen one of those turntables wear that far. Now, from there we go into um, uh, my Ferris wheel, which <clears throat> is a crowd favorite. I think mostly just because of its size. I don't know. And it's, you know, it's kind of a recognizable shape from across the room even. Um, from there we go out of that into my, oh, here it goes again. My um, perpetual prototype. And I'm sure somewhere in the comments, somebody will give me a hard time. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> deservedly so. Right. You know, I don't know how many years it's been prototyped, but... <laughs> well, it still has, I have to say, the, the reason that... Uh, there's two reasons why it's still a prototype. One, I haven't really had that much time to rebuild it. But two, I'm still not entirely happy with the, the method I used for um, to keep the balls moving in the air. They still manage a way to get underneath uh, one of these every once in a while, and that messes things up. So, but yeah, someday I might actually surprise you and have that rebuilt. Um, yes, yeah, I'm sure, you know, I'll hold your breath till I do that. You'd all be dead <laughs> if you held your breath. From there we go into a, another small ball pump, and that passes the balls into my counter. Um, which still has a, a bug in the most significant bit. So uh, if it says zero in the front, I don't know if I'd believe it. <laughs> At this point, um, it should be, what does it say? No, but what's the whole thing say? Yeah, it's probably not 4,000, it's 14,000. At this point, it should be. Out, out, after that, we go into my... Uh, small sweeper which has five different sweeping bars and um, I I don't I think we mentioned this the last time I, I changed some of those colors so that they're the brick world colors because yes. Brian gave me a hard time <laughs> once you gotta have a theme that's important <laughs> yeah um, after that we go into Steve Hassan plugs <clears throat> um, his picker which is a the original concept was an Akiuki design um, he's turned it into a robot factory which is really neat. Nice steam thing. Lots of different. I think he's got pretty much every robot in there that Lego has ever done. <clears throat> um, except maybe the gold chrome C-3PO, which he used to have in there, but I think he pulled it out just because. Right. Um, after that, we go into another Hassan plug module. And as far as I know, this is one of the original modules built back at 2004 to kind of prove out the concept okay. and it's been around ever since after that we go into a simple conveyor <clears throat> which drops the balls in back to the ball dozer which is where we started and we have a young lady driving right now and um, I don't think she she knows that there's some pressure on her right now to actually get the balls in the output thing and she's clearly not uh oh she noticed. <laughs> Watch, she'll get it. 
She's got this. She's got there, this. There you go. Oh, oh yeah. beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> so, and that completes our loop. Um, this has been uh, an awesome show so far. What we have here is, other than the young man who brought his one little workshop module, all the people who have participated in this event are experienced GBCers. Okay. Um, so we, we haven't had to, we've had to pull like one or two modules for a quick repair, but other than that, everything's been working pretty well. Um, so it's been a pretty awesome show. Yeah, well, I think this is a great layout. This is for a smaller show like Fort Wayne. This has to be one of the bigger GBCs that you've done here. Yeah, I think we have. We did a county and a, a count, and uh, one person counted 80, and one person counted 79. So I mean, we're somewhere in there, um, and th and that's pretty good for a small show like this to get that yeah. many modules. Uh, and you know, GBC is growing, and everybody keeps making new modules, and <laughs> except me, I haven't made a new one in a while, but. I'm gonna, I promise I will fix that. You'll, you'll get on in here at some point. <laughs> I will. Um, no, I, it's, my life has been complicated lately, and, and, and things are coming. I know I'm going to have some time uh, between the next big event I do, uh, so I darn well better have something new. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's what the winter is for. You know, shows die down, and you have some time to build. That's right. That is absolutely right. That's what winter's for. More new modules. <laughs> exactly. Well, sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for taking us through again. I think there's some great modules here. It's wonderful to see it all running and definitely hit with the public like usual. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. And and amazingly, I think Mr. Hassenplug caught on to the fact that there was a good handful of cameras running the whole time. So surprisingly, he behaved himself. And oh, I, I did not. So feel, out of character. I did not feel a single soccer ball bounce off of me the whole interview. And with Mr. Hassenplug in the same room, that's got to be a first for a long time. So I, I think we've done it. We've. He needs to step it up. We. No. <laughs> I'm good with the way things are now. Uh.